this thing. Ooh. And we're live. This is Literary Roadhouse. One short story, once a week. I'm Remy. I'm Anise. I'm Gerald. This week, we're reading a story called The Last Question by Isaac Asimov. And before I give the summary, I want to give a shout out to my friend Nazar, who suggested this story because it turned out to be a good one. And you will see why I think so. So this story, it's about the future and what that might look like. And in the author's depiction, uh, humans have succeeded in creating artificial intelligence capable, capable of solving any problems and answering any question except one. Can entropy or the universe's tendency to move towards disorder be reversed? And that's it. Okay, good yep. summary. That's wow. the end of the summary? Okay. okay. I, I thought there was more summary coming. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, you know, scene break. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Remy's, Remy's turning this into his own little show, isn't it? I'd just like to put a shout out to my friend. <laughs> we go I to an ad break that soon. shout out. I love this story. So, Nazar was Okay. Job. Well, I'm glad you loved it. Yeah. Let's just find out how everybody feels. Any? You loved, loved it. it. Mm -hmm. Was this like a big love, or was it just a little love? It was a huge love. It was. I okay. I feel like horrible admitting this, but I hadn't read Asimov before. It was like I'm like to do, but never did. Uh, he's way cool. I didn't know he was this cool. So yeah, <laughs> I loved it. And Rami. Yep. Same here. Wow. Gerald. I enjoyed it. I, I I heard that sigh. Now I don't feel so bad. Um, I I enjoyed it. <laughs> There's a different level of enjoyment there. Um, yeah. So tell me, what was it about the story that you guys really really loved, Annie and Remy? Since you guys seem like so gung ho about this. So. I one thing I liked about it was that to just keeping in mind um, the the time in which it was written, which was 1956, and considering that, I think that the story is so prescient. Just you know, the the future hasn't, or maybe it's not going to pan out exactly as the author uh, illustrates, but I think it's just a great imagination and creative juices to be able to come up with all of this stuff in such a convincing way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like the conflation of like this super artificial intelligence with the universe with God. I really enjoyed that. And I also, he was like, like his thesis here is kind of optimistic and cute in a way. Like it's cheerful. It's very rare to find cheerful sci-fi. <laughs> yeah. Cheerful sci-fi. Okay. <laughs> How about you, Gerald? It's a whole new genre. Um, yeah, it, it was very good. It's written in in the year I was born, so that that was good. Um, and um, one. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna flip you off one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do that. And um, I, yeah, it, it was interesting, and I, I enjoyed it. I, I, I guess I don't. I didn't get a sort of I, the the very end bit was 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 better, and and will probably up the mark a little bit. But I, I don't. It's. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's got the depth that I'm looking for from a, a literary story. I think it's 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 a good story. It's very cleverly written. Very very nicely written it's it's a good read but um yeah yeah i'm right there with you gerald um as i was reading it i enjoyed it so if i would have read this before i got really into literary fiction i would have been all about isaac Asimov. like middle school and high school me would have just been all up in the story but for me the issue was that 
like the piece was right there, page one, and I felt a little beat over the head with it. And I didn't really start to see the beauty of what he was doing until the end of the story. I felt like the ending of the story was much stronger than the beginning. And I felt like there just wasn't the level of nuance that I personally like from a story and that I come to expect from great literature. That said, what do you guys see what he's done? He take of creation. He's taken the idea of evolution. He's taken the idea that we came from aliens and kind of smooshed it all together into one thesis, which is kind of freaking amazing. <laughs> That's very, very, very clever. I like that. Yeah. The fact that by the end, you're just with your mind communicating with this. It's also like the, like the pantheism thing where like the whole universe is itself God, like that idea. So you just, no one even really knows where it is. Someone's like, I think it's like a two foot wide, like globe floating somewhere. Like, you know, nobody. And by kind of, the end, they're all smushed together. So it's yeah. like, it is consciousness. Yeah, exactly. I thought it was really cool. So, so awesome. So since we're all sound a little dead today <laughs> I, I i'm i'm being polite i got i got a lot of excitement that i'm trying to like not <laughs> okay um i'm just gonna wind you up and let you go <laughs> okay so i wanted to explain why i think it's optimistic and cheerful because so one of the issues that the acs are solving as they evolve is a problem of overpopulation and at no point is it like why don't we just kill off some humans which is like what any like robot <laughs> artificial intelligence that any sci-fi would do like somehow the super powerful all-knowing universal ac is like yeah i'm still gonna answer your dumb questions i'm gonna answer like how do i boil an egg <laughs> which i thought was kind of cute like that doesn't happen in sci-fi. No, and it's a fatal flaw in the computer programming. <laughs> yeah, like, at no point, yeah, at no point is but it like kill all humans. But the, the the computer is programmed, right? And it wasn't that wasn't the type of question that it was asked where an appropriate response would be to kill all humans. But yeah, I definitely agree that we do find it rampant in, in science fiction that you know the machines turn against the humans and everything like that well, but for me case, mm -hmm. yeah it did um seem like a very benevolent machine and um well so i listened to the audio version that gerald had sent out and it was a little incongruent with the story itself because it's read by the author isaac asimov and he has this heavy brooklyn accent that reminds me of bernie sanders a little bit um but in, step away from the ledge Jeremy. <laughs> but in my imagination the voice of the multivac or this you know the the artificial intelligence uh, manifested in the the computer of the multivac it sh should have sounded something more like helen mirren who, who voiced uh, Deep Thought in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I think that would have been uh, much more suitable. Well, I read it on paper, and in my head, I was hearing Hal from 2001 Space Odyssey. But <clears throat> regardless... Someone British, yeah. Hal, Hal didn't sound British. Hal sounded like, hello, Dave. Oh, hello, yeah. Dave. <laughs> Gerald knows what I'm talking about because we're old. Um, <laughs> Um, I don't know, because the computer was only programmed initially when it was on Earth, and then the computer started building its own, it, it was creating its own replacements, and so yeah. it surpassed humanity. And you would think, if it has surpassed humanity, and it has figured out how to make humans live forever, it's figured out how to make humans live without their bodies, it's figured out all this other stuff, it would have figured out, hey, we could kill off half the humans and be okay here. Um, but still wouldn't have reversed the entropy. Like, you kill people, yeah, but, but it's not going to solve the problem. Yeah, right, right, but what Maya is saying is, that's the one question that the story is focusing on. But the story says you do ask it all kinds of questions all the time. And one of the questions was, how do we deal with overpopulation? How do we deal with, um, you know, traveling across great distances in outer space? Where do we get energy from? How do we harness the energy of the sun? So... Yeah, the story's focusing on this one question, but it's not that that's the only purpose of the ACs. Yeah. I think that was the only flaw in the logic. I'm I'm with you, Annie. So that was the only flaw in the logic of the computers. Um, how did you guys feel about the men? 
about the characters. There's a lot of people in this, and they all have weird names, and the names get weirder by generation. Yeah. They get kind of Chinesey by the end, which I was like, that's <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. What is VX23? Like, uh, I, I don't know. So how do you guys feel about that? It's okay. It's, it's, it's science fiction, isn't it? it it's, it, it, it's showing the progression uh, and giving clues to the progression of the ages, doesn't it? Where, um, where things are changing. So not only are the, um, not only are the way that people interact with the, the, the ACs, no, no matter, no, oh, come on, Gerald. Um, not only is it, it, is that changing, but it's also the, um, you know, the people are changing themselves and, and, so yeah that, that but how do we know that people are changing themselves the only two sets of people that we really see as actual characters are the initial drunk guys because we see them drinking highballs which i actually really appreciated because in a lot of really bad sci-fi they forget the humans are still humans and so here they are they're drinking highball whatever probably whiskey and getting drunk and asking a computer stupid questions like that's so human and then the um the couple with the kids Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. The rest of the characters, where's the characterization? That's my big problem with this story. I didn't feel close to any of the characters at all, so I didn't really, really care. Really? Okay, so I actually, I like the choice of all the characters as normal people. None of them were like mm -hmm. authority figures or gurus or anything like that. They were just like, these two just are like technicians <laughs> and this is just a family. Um, but I felt that there was characterization, but it did deaden over time as they lost their bodies. But by the time you get to the VX numbers, VV, whatever, whatever, you know, they have that weird kind of like primal, like inkling of like, oh, what is our original home? And then they're like disappointed that Earth isn't there. And they're, they're still having, you know, <clears throat> emotional reactions to things. It's just everything gets more muted until they're just basically consciousness beaming around. Mm. And, and right at the end, they... They cease to have names. They're just man. So that's that's pretty cool, I think. Yeah. Because because names aren't important as as they lose, as as they lose whatever it is that makes them tick, and 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 they become more subsumed within the the, the technology. You know, the names become less important. And I, and but I, wouldn't I, that have been stronger if the characters in the beginning were stronger? Yeah. But you said they were, right? The ones who got drunk. They were and a little stronger, questions. but I still didn't feel like emotionally attached. Like those were the only people that actually felt like people, but they didn't feel like fully fleshed characters to me. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think you're right. Like they're not fully fleshed characters that are like give you know, giving you like an insight and like a well drawn human being. But I feel like yeah, but... because of the way the story Go is. Ahead. Is that what you're gonna say, Remy? Exactly. It, it's it's beyond the scope of the story. So yes, the story isn't emotionally deep but it is nuanced in its portrayal of the future and the implications of how certain things are. And maybe this is my issue with my definition of story, because at the core of my definition of story, story is about people. It's about mm. humans and their experience in the world. And so a, care, a story with humans that don't really feel humanity, that for lack of a better, they don't feel human, um, ceases to be a story for me, it starts to become more of a thesis. So it's more of a commentary of what what's going to happen to humans. So he's, he's trying to say that humans will be de-individualized and it's going to be more of a collective. So in essence, you have to take out, you know, the, the subtle emotional differences and all that. That's funny. I didn't see it necessarily as a thesis on what's going to happen to humanity. I saw it as more of like a commentary on what God is, what intelligence is, and what the universe is. And then the conflation of those things as being the same as a central thesis. And then the device of having humanity unify, like coming to this sort of singular point, um, is the way that he illustrates it. But I don't think Isaac Asimov necessarily is saying this is like the inevitable way that humanity is going to go like maybe or maybe it's the way he wishes it would go maybe he's like i hope we just have a computer that solves all our problems but you know i don't think he necessarily was saying that's what will happen um but i did like the commentary on the universe and god and everything like that i thought it was pretty cool and especially like 
so all the stuff that the two characters, the technicians are saying in the beginning is stuff that in the 50s was like just starting to be discovered. And the way he just sort of like seamlessly weaves that in there as like common knowledge in, in you know, 2061 was kind of funny. Yeah. And I, I think the, the characters did change. I think there was characterization because the, the two characters at the start were just like ordinary guys, you know, you and me and, and just uh, they're technicians and they're having a drink. And when you get to the family, they, they're sort of, they're, they're subtly different and, and they, they're, you know, the kids are sort of jumping around, but they tell them to, to stop and, and their names are, you know, all, all different variants of, of the one. So I, I, I think, I think he did that well, that, that sort of changing of the characters from, from you and me to, to abs almost abstract, well, at the end, yeah, an abstract um, idea, really, a consciousness. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Carol. That's, that's... I, I, I definitely think that, you know, the characters at the beginning were stronger than the characters at the end. I think that they just weren't strong enough for me um, to really feel like this was more of a story and less of a thesis. I felt like this was a thesis on religion and a thesis on the future of humanity and, and ecological commentary, but I didn't really feel like this was a story. Mm. And I'm going to get all the flame. Okay. You can send hate mail to mail at literaryroadhouse.com. I don't think you'll get flame. <laughs> I don't think you'll get flame, especially because this is something yeah, that... I got flame for criticizing Hemingway. Like, okay, we both Isaac did. Asimov is like a religion, man. I know, but that was like episode in the single digits. Yeah, so, like, way back. yeah the way back machine. But that's, that's probably I, when we were sitting having drinks in the in the basement, wasn't it? Back in those days. You know, what, right now my faith in humanity is at an all time low. I've been yeah. criticized for laughing too much, and I've had my website taken down for speaking out about an election. I'm fried, so take it away. Yeah. Well, I was just gonna I was just gonna say that I, but I think a lot of people might actually agree with you as well in the sense that. If you're not somebody, so like I'm already inclined to be really giddy about the idea of like universe as God, like I'm already like excited by that or the idea of like artificial intelligence. So I'm like, oh, but I'm like the primed reader for this. If you're not one of those people, then the story just feels like, I guess that was a cute twist at the end, you know? Like <laughs> I am one of those people. That's one of the things that kind of annoys mm. me. I should be, I should love this story. I really should because I do believe in a concept of like genetic memory and universal consciousness and there's a lot more to us than we realize like i i have all that stuff going on in the back of my head mm -hmm. the story just didn't do it for me it, it kind of felt like it was already it was saying stuff that i already thought and it didn't give me anything new <laughs> yeah. yeah and i don't mm -hmm. personally believe the stuff that was presented mm -hmm. either but i still enjoyed the story because I, because of the twist at the end also, because I feel like it was sort of like, um, well, yeah, not, not really like a, a mystery story, but just uh, that twist ending was unexpected. And then you, you kind of, it makes you reflect on everything else that was going on in the story uh, that preceded it. Totally. The ending saved it for me. Mm. If the ending had been different, I wouldn't have enjoyed the story at all. The ending completely saved the story for me. Mm -hmm. This yeah. kind of reminds me just a little bit of there's this episode of Futurama where the humans and aliens go to a different planet with tiny microscopic robots and the robots evolve and then they debate whether or not there's a higher power that was humans who put them, you know, so it kind of had this like, <laughs> it, it kind of reminded me of that, but it was just slightly different because here there's a whole like new genesis, like it starts over again with the new universe with light. Mm -hmm. But um, it reminded me of that episode of Futurama. And also there was a part of me that was like, can we get this machine to like solve global warming? That'd be great. Like, just tell me how to do it. <laughs> Not enough data. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 There was also I, I, something, oh, go ahead, Gerald. No, I, I was just going to say my, I just, just to let you know that my mark is increasing as, as we discuss this story. <laughs> Like really? It. Mine's actually going down. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting more and more irritated Mine has as, by the story. I'm not liking it more and more. Keep talking. Mine can't go up anymore. Uh -oh. oh, there's a Ooh. <laughs> foreshadowing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I was going to say the other thing that I sort of really liked about this 
which again, this, this is now subtle or layers. So when the first two characters are arguing, like, but how can you say forever when in 20 billion years, the sun's going to blow up? Like, how can you say forever? And there was a part of me that was like, guys, 20 billion years is a long time. You don't think we're going to have solved that by then? Like the idea that you can solve big issues is something that never occurs to any of the humans where they're just like, oh yeah, we're, like the idea of solving the last question, not other questions, but the last question of how do you, basically it's it's a fear of death, a fear of the end. And it's like, how do you put that off? Humans, I guess, being so mortal, don't ever conceive of an option where even given 20 billion years, you'll find a solution for that, right? Which felt to me very like true. I don't think there's a solution for that because I'm mortal and I'm a human, but it makes sense to me that a robot, the response kept changing, right? In the beginning, it was insufficient data for a meaningful answer. And then the last time it gives it, it's like, insufficient data as of yet <laughs> like it's like we'll get there it's yeah, gonna happen yeah maybe. yeah when do you think it was because they didn't foresee an answer because when i think of human beings i see us constantly striving to solve really big issues like there's scientists trying to solve global warming right now yep, exactly. like we are constantly we're very inventive and we have this idea that we can do anything with enough time and for me the idea that these people wouldn't try to find an answer spoke more to the fact that they had given up their own individual like sense of problem solving to this external computer so these people have the computer has grown to the point that humanity can't keep up with it they can't fix mm -hmm. it doesn't understand how it works anymore and so they've kind of just become its servants or its fish and it's like you know taking care of the aquarium for them and and that is what it spoke to me it spoke of this loss of personal power in humanity to solve its own problems because it had externalized it to technology mm -hmm. I, yeah, just just on the the computer's response um i was just looking at them and and it changes each time which, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. really it's insufficient data for meaningful answer was the first one and then it goes on to um uh, come on where is it uh something the third like, whack it could changes th there is insufficient data for a meaningful answer so it's a little bit more you know more sort of common sense and and uh makes it, it's it's response and yeah there is as yet insufficient data so it, it's the computer evolving in its response as well which 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 is actually very clever yeah mm. yeah yeah, yeah. Oh there's little subtleties like that oh. really it's mark mm. Mm, mm -hmm. it's good it's really now good. i have a question because i read this on my kindle mm -hmm. and did you guys see scene breaks between the different changes in generations yeah there was yes. a line Okay, because in mine it didn't, and that was confusing. And so I won't bring up that comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's supposed to be lines, so I guess I was like, don't messed up. What happened? Where am I? I'm confused. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe it was just how it converted to Kindle. That's another thing. There was more scenes into the future than I thought there would be. There came a point where I'm like, how do you keep going? How do you go up from here? <laughs> you know, like mm. what? Yeah, which, which again, was very rewarding. So they'd be like, how can there be another scene? Like, we've reached the end. Nope. Like, I thought it was going to end with, oh, we're sad that Earth is gone for some reason, because I don't know Asimov. <laughs> what I find interesting is how much this story is reflected in our current media culture. Like, I'm thinking back to cartoons my kids watched. Um, what was it? The kid with the really big brain who was super smart. Dexter? No, the other one. Jimmy Neutron. Mm. Thank you, Jimmy Neutron. Thank you. Remember the blob aliens that show up and they're like flying on like machines and they're just blobs. They don't even have bodies anymore. Like at that portion when the bodies are left and it's just like this consciousness, like in my mind, I'm picturing the blob aliens from Jimmy Neutron. Mm. And like I know that I've seen like these ideas in things like South Park and The Simpsons and just goofy cartoons for kids it seems like this story has been part of the um culture for a really long time it like really got absorbed by the culture yeah and and this would i guess be one of the originators i don't know if it's the originator but it's pretty early and um when people start thinking in that way and i think it 
so we've read stories before where we're like, we have seen this theme. We have seen these points recreated and repeated uh-huh. and shifted. And then we say, and we like the recreations better. For me, the reason I like this so much is it's the original. And I really like the original. And that, that says something to me. Yeah. Do we want to talk about the language at all? Okay. What, Remy? I was going to add to what Anais had said about it continuing even after traditionally you would think, okay, it's the end of the world. And that speaks to how much imagination and, and creative energy there w- was put into this because it's also refreshing because Isaac Asimov, he himself has a PhD. And I think what kind of made it more realistic is that I, I, I'm assuming that all of the ideas presented were grounded in popular theories at, at the time and in science. Yeah, well, it definitely was grounded in multiple religions. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't picture him not having grounded it in science. I think that's one of the reasons why he's held in such high regard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought it was funny that computers were so big for so long. Like, oh, Isaac, you did not predict. Yeah, he missed yeah. the mark on that one. But that's yeah. okay. It's 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 yeah. in a way it makes the story like visually the images going out to the language question that Maya just asked. It makes the stories visually, um, kind of more like, I don't know, like traditionally sci-fi e. Which again, I just really liked. I just liked how it was like very nuts and bolts. Like this is a sci-fi with really good ideas. So that's not just me? No. Nope. Okay. And so I was optimistic. Okay. Oh, right. Maybe it was me. She came back. <laughs> Did I cut out for everyone? Yeah. 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 Oh, I was just saying. <laughs> oh, okay. So I was saying to answer Maya's question about um, language, having these computers be like really kind of big and then kind of like a little goofy because of what we know now, 60 years later. Um, made it visually because it, it did paint images in my mind very well even if the characters weren't necessarily fleshed out i could picture what they were seeing fairly well and it made it kind of very like tropey sci-fi like campy in a way that i enjoyed yeah and, and, and another another thing that it, it, he did well um was was the first computer was this huge thing in in this building and had technicians attending to it and and by the end it's this thing that that sort of exists in hyperspace and 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 you know you can communicate from with it from anywhere in 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 the galaxies um or the universe even so that's that's pretty good I like that yeah i didn't really see anything super special about the language um you know, usually when I'm reading, there's at least a quote that I'm like, ooh, that's interesting, and I'll online, underline it. I mean, I'll highlight it on my Kindle or whatever. Even if I don't bring it up on the show, there's usually something. And I really didn't have that experience for the story. Um, the language was really simple, and it portrayed the idea as well, but it had a lot of distance for me. It really pushed me away from the characters and pushed me away from the story rather than bringing me in. And so I'm very torn about the story because I'm sitting here, I'm looking at it, and the ideas are amazing, and the writing is confident. I mean, more than confident. But I'm having a hard time seeing the special in it. So so explain to me what's special about the story. Fix me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about, how about at, in the last vignette, when it says matter and energy had ended and with it space and time. Even AC existed only for the sake of the one last question that it had never answered from the time a half drunken computer 10 trillion years before had asked the question of a computer that to, that was to AC far less than man was to man. Mm. That's a cool sentence. You like that? Yeah. yeah, because he refers to this couple of th- he refers to the, those two drunken people in the beginning as computers themselves. Mm-hmm. Yes, and he makes the distinction between the multivac way back then and then a singular man to the capital man, which is the collective consciousness of all immortal human beings. 
So, did you notice what you did? I asked you to point out an amazing sentence, and you had to go all the way to the end of the story. <laughs> well, that's one. I mean, I can look for others, but that's one that was I'm just pretty silly. <laughs> <to me. laughs> Where I picked, you can say that. You can say, oh, you have to go to the I'm just the giving story. you crap, you know. I'm being devil's advocate over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, I th- I th- go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I, th- I think that I, I think, yeah, what you say about the language, Maya, I, I think it's true. It's, it's not, it, it's, it, it flowed and it's, it's very, it is, is a very readable story and it's a very enjoyable story because it's partially because it's easy to read. So, I, I yeah, the, you, you sort of, you don't read, you read a sentence, and think, whoa, wow, and, and underline it and highlight it or anything, except the last one, perhaps, but, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, it, it's it, it's it's good. You know, it is it's it's not that special, but good. He also ma- so. What was it about the ending of the story that entranced us so much? Those of us that are like, yeah, it's confident. Like there was something about that ending that got us. What was it about that ending? I, th- I think I think it was it's a surprise. I think it, I wasn't expecting it, and I wasn't, and it sort of made it it, it made sense too. So the the, the it, it's what you could imagine that happening. Um, so it's very clever, very clever ending. Because the ending was about the beginning. Mm-hmm. Comes full circle. Yeah. He also made up a lot of sci-fi jargon, which is kind of hard to do to make up sci-fi jargon that um, people still understand. I'm trying to find one that I was like, why do George I understand Saunders this gibberish? To it. Huh? George Saunders. Yeah. And everything. It totally reminded me of George Saunders. <laughs> I'm trying to find the one where he's talking like, like he uses the word ether as the root word for things. Um, I can't find it right now, but it's just like, it's, it's so, it, it's campy. Like that's part of it. Like the setup for everything, like, okay, it's main thesis is not, it's main thesis is very smart and the coming full circle is very rewarding and it's commentary and sort of God, the universe, intelligence, man as computer uh, or indistinguishable from any other kind of intelligence, even the ones that we created when they reach a high enough level is great. But then you have this, this like a giant computer that is like spanning, you know, like it just, it's very, um, yeah, campy is the best word for it. And these words that he makes up, like there should, it's like this jargon that you immediately feel like you've been using it forever. Uh, I'm trying to find the ether root because that was the one that stood out for me the most is like, why do I understand this? But <laughs> you guys can talk until I find it. Yeah. <laughs> so was there anything else you guys wanted to bring up about this story? have anything i felt like the story didn't have a whole lot of layers to it its thesis was just like right on top like icing and once i got past the icing you know it was (laughs) harsh today hey i like vanilla cake (laughs) i like it okay it's just not my favorite but it's it's still cake cake is good i I didn't call it it white cake (laughs) <laughs> it would make an interesting movie. It at least had flavor. White cake doesn't even have flavor. What flavor is white? <laughs> at least vanilla cakes taste like vanilla. <laughs> what, what rabbit hole are we going down now? This is. <laughs> What's a vanilla cake? Okay. Never heard of it. Oh, it was this. It was this. Okay, I found it. Just like this, 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 these two sentences are full of so much jargon, but because of the way he set you up for it in the past vignettes, you're like, oh, yes, totally makes sense that this is how the AC would evolve. So, this is when the, the vignette where people's names are letters and numbers. So, MQ17J is a person. Uh, MQ17J paused to wonder if someday in his immortal life he would be able, he would get to see the galactic AC. It was on a little world of its own, a spider webbing of force beams holding the matter within which surges of submessence took the place of the old clumsy molecular valves. Yet despite its subetheric workings, the galactic AC was known to be a full thousand feet across. Like this is nonsense words, but as you're reading the story, <laughs> you know, like this should not make sense to anyone. But as you're reading the story, he has like bathed you in his jargon that you're like, 
makes sense. And yeah. I, I, I think that's funny. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Yeah. I think that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay, then I guess we're going to rate this puppy. Yeah. So, um, Remy, just get it out of the way. J just do it. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Remy. You! <laughs> oh, me. All right. Yeah. Since if people are wondering why I had said that my rating can't go any higher, because I was planning to give it a six, and that's the highest score possible. <laughs> just, just give us the number. <laughs> okay, now we got that out of the way. Let's get to the real ratings. I'm joking. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm just teasing. Okay. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, Gerald. Yeah. Oh, this is five. Anise. I am also a six. So <laughs> what up? I loved it. Okay, before I give my rating, I must say, <laughs> Go on. I didn't think it was a horrible story. I thought it was a perfectly uh, fine story. The ending was good. It was really good. But the rest of it, it just didn't work for me. I didn't have any layers. There was nothing really for me to chew into. I felt kind of let down. Give it a three. Can you repeat? Three. Can, can you three. repeat the, the hate mail email address again for people? Um, mail at literaryroadhouse.com and just put Maya hates sci-fi. <laughs> Make sci-fi great again. Okay, I couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. That. Oh my god. We've already had the website down, go down once for my personal big mouth. Come on now. <laughs> no, I, this was a story that I feel like at ease. I feel like competently written. And honestly, I wanted to give it a two and a half. But I felt like that mm. wasn't being fair. Like maybe yeah, three, just my three is not a bad rating. I feel like maybe at two and a half, maybe my own biases about sci-fi were coming into play. As a kid, it was much more a, a, a fantasy kid. I liked sci-fi some, but that wasn't my main genre. And so I'm willing to allow for a little bit of extra, but at the same time, I need layers. I need my parfait. I need my donkey. I need to feel like underneath that surface, there's something there for me to chew on, and I just wasn't getting it. Yeah, all the Shrek references. <laughs> awesome. yeah. I saw you roll your eyes. You know, Maya, I find that interesting because I don't identify myself as particularly sci-fi inclined either. But for me, what I was left with after the story ended to chew on is the future and the, the direction that we're moving in. And, and, and what but that was right at the top. That was right at the top. There was nothing for me to discover. There was no but nuance. You, no, you you don't have to discover it. You can think about it. So think about like oh, where are we going. Story that gives me enough room to be a fully fledged brain on my own. I don't want my stories to force feed me. That said, and I'm so used to stories that do have multiple meanings that I if I do read genre fiction, I want it to have those multiple meanings. Or else I feel let down. There was a lot to chew on. I'll give you that. Like, future of humanity, religion. But it was all, like, right there on the top. Like, you read this to a little kid. They're going to turn to you and say, Mommy, does that mean the aliens were really God in the Bible? Like, like a little kid's going to come out with the freaking thesis. <laughs> wow. You guys are going to talk me into a two and a half. <laughs> Let's stop at three, guys. Let's Don't do go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, three isn't Stop bad. Protesting. I think a three is a perfectly good rating for a story. I read a lot of books. I enjoy it's threes. You know, I think a three is perfectly good. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so there you go. Yep. Yeah. So what are we putting in the pot for next week? Before y'all kill me for not liking Isaac Asimov, I'm going to re try to read more of them because you know there are some authors that once you read multiple stories you like them better i will give him another chance this well, man not, might just not have been the story for me well maya well then you oh, should cool. be rooting for me because i'm putting in nightfall the nightfall by isaac asimov i like it so I much I do, we another. Need rule? do we need a rule <laughs> no we do not need a rule we need to put your money with your mouth is and root for me to win <laughs> so that we read more asimov <laughs> no <laughs> 
I thought I thought you said, "Do we need a wall?" Then I was like, <laughs> Gerald, Oops, back sorry. away from the election. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah. Bye. Well, I'm going to put "Herding Vegetable Sheep" by Ekaterina Sidia. It's magical okay. realism. Woohoo! Did did Gerald just submit a magical realism? Yeah. Was that a thing that just happened? Was it in Carve? Yeah. He froze for me. Is it because is it, it was in Carve? No. <laughs> no, he chose a magical realism story on his own. Oh my That's own. not from Carve. Carve no, doesn't really do that. That's like me picking a parable. Like, how does that happen? Uh, is he okay? It's like me He's picking a new England nature scene. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a time for surprises. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, the story I'm picking is usually taught at the university level. It's a pretty complex story, though it's short. But I think after almost two years of reading short stories, I think we can do it. I, I'm sure that we can do this story. Wow. The Goford Grape Grape bleh, The Goford Grape Line by Charles Chestnut. It was written in 1887. Whoa. Okay. Alrighty. So. I enjoyed making this game, and sure it's about computers. Oh, Gerald's like, I'm going to win. Let's, because I, another thing, I really enjoy conceptualizing really huge numbers, because it's amazing to just think about it, because you can't really grasp, wrap your head around it, but uh, we'll get to that later. Okay. So, first question, and this is starting in order of how you are on my screen, it goes to Gerald. Yep. What company invented the floppy disk? Was it Apple, IBM, or Microsoft? Uh, that would be IBM. And you are correct. Anais. When did Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Wayne found Apple? 1976, 1979, 1982. Founded the company itself? 82? Yes. 82, it's, it was 76. Really? That early yep. with the company? Yep. I thought they were still like garaging it. It was still a company when they were in the garage. Mm. Yep. Okay. Maya. What does CPU stand for? Computer programming units, central processing units, central placement units. Central processing unit. Correct. Yeah. When referring to computer memory, what does the acronym RAM stand for? Random access memory, routing automatic memory, or recycled automated memory? Random access memory. He's giggling Correct. because he was an engineer and he's old, so he was like alive during all this. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> it's gonna get harder. These are these are. Yes, I, I remember that. All except the one that I got, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, things work out that way. This is yes. weighted in terms of flavor. <laughs> I'm not sure if you'll know this one too. So Good. Anais, Thanks. the first the first computer mouse was invented in 1964. With what material? Metal, rubber, or wood? Rubber? Nope, it was wood. I went with something weird. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wood it would be is weird too. I well, think. but the, all the box stuff, the all metal. electronics was like put in wood back then. Mm -hmm. All right, Maya. Mm -hmm. In what year was the iPhone first released? 2002. Did you say 2002 or 2003? Three. 2003. Three, five, seven. It was 2007. 2003. What? No. Yeah. What? They were so late. I had a trio back then. Wow. wow. Mm. 
All right, uh, Gerald, the top five most visited websites in the world are Google, YouTube, Facebook, Wikipedia. These are in order. And which one? Yahoo, Baidu, or Twitter? Um, is, what's the middle one? Baidu. Ba yeah, Baidu, Baidu, B I'm not sure. B -E -D -O. B A I D U. Oh, it's that one, I think. Yep, it is. Mm. Not something you would expect. I was hoping but... you wouldn't get it. Dang it. <laughs> Gerald won. We can't, there's no comeback to be had. That's okay. We'll just finish. <laughs> Are this. we tied? Like almost? No. I've missed one. one. Yeah. All right. Um, this one's tough, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. And I use, I'm sorry, Thanks. you just happened to. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. <laughs> what is the maximum length of a do domain name? Is it 54 characters, <laughs> 63 <laughs> characters, or 72 characters? 54. 63. Oh. Nice. All right, and Maya. <laughs> According to IBM's calculations, from the year 2003 and working backwards to the beginning of human history, how much information have humans generated? Was it five exabytes? Uh, an exabyte is a billion gigabytes, by the way. Is it five exabytes, 10 exabytes, or 20 exabytes? 20. Five. Five? Even with the Vatican's library? OK. I'm not sure if they're counting images in this, but I, yeah, according to their calculations, that's what they said. So this was my bonus question, okay? This one I really like. Approximately, so those five exabytes, right? How Approximately how much time does it take us to create this much data? <laughs> I thought you were gonna ask how much of it was poor. <laughs> <laughs> Half. Wow, where is Half your is head right now? <laughs> if we're counting furries, it's half. <laughs> Do we have any guesses? No. Um, um, how long does it take us to create that amount? Yeah, like how how much? How, what was the question again? So we said from 2003 to, to the beginning of time, a total of five exabytes was generated. How much time does it take us as oh, humans to produce this much information today, like how, to create this much data? To create as much data as has existed in all of mankind, how much time would it take to produce it now? I guess like five not years. Not to reproduce it, not to reproduce it. Just the equivalent five amount. Yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm saying like point. five years. Five years, all right. I'll say. Can I use? Oh. Gerald? Whatever. Ladies first. Thanks. Okay. I'm going to go four years. All right. <coughs> I'm going to go under. half an hour. Half an hour, Gerald. Mm. Yep. Your, half an hour? Computer. No, it's not. It's every 10 minutes. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. Gerald is very close. That's, deep. That's real deep. Yep. Wow. Okay. So who won? Gerald won, right? Gerald won. Gerald won. Gerald, yes. won every... Gerald, didn't, even miss a Gerald didn't even Perfect get the bonus score. wrong. You <laughs> waited. You <laughs> plotted this together, didn't you? You guys were in Slack and private messages going, hey, you a quiz about computer history. I got it. And he's like, yeah, I got you, man. <laughs> Bro. Give me the random access memory question, though. Give me that one. <laughs> <laughs> I gave Maya results, CPU. That one's yeah. equally as difficult. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Gerald. I won fair and square. Mm -hmm. You did. <laughs> According to the laws of the game. Um, Some other people reading, have won fair and square. We are reading Herding Vegetable Sheep by Ekaterina Sedia. But before you go, visit our pod back. That's the podcast AC at literaryroadhouse.com and input in the comment section your thoughts. If you're looking to help maintain the pod back, you can do so by leaving a review on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. It keeps us humming along.
The podback has grown and discovered the answer to how to release other shows, such as the Literary Roadhouse Book Club and the Bradbury Challenge. So, so check them out. And finally, we're investing in Podback to make a podcast god and beam directly into subscribers' consciousness. Help us cover our expenses at patreon.com slash literary roadhouse. And as always, insufficient data for funny sign-off joke. Until next time, <laughs> read a good story. <laughs> okay, uh, listen to this in the, my background. How the heck am I going to record Bradbury Challenge? I don't hear anything. Yeah, we you don't hear this. this rap music blaring through my door? Okay, well, that's... At least somewhat helpful. I'm sure my mic's gonna pick it all up. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Yeah. Ciao. Bye. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye. Bye.